Hello everybody, today we're looking at Father Mike Schmitz from Ascension Presents again, who if you don't remember, last time we saw him was self-servingly preaching that atheists should all believe nothing matters and be miserable in a transparent attempt to try to make people more emotionally vulnerable so they would fall into religion. Well, this video is called Why You'll Never Be Strong Enough. Gee, I wonder what I should expect from this one. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Ascension Presents. I talk to so many people who experience that their big spiritual battle is discouragement. And that it's and that this is so common. That I, just, I just wanted to take one moment. One moment? The video is over seven minutes long. That's the world's longest moment. And and kind of address a little bit of of, dis, of discouragement. What is, what is that? When it feels like um, not just like things aren't going my way, and not just like oh man, I uh, I'm really struggling right now, but the discouragement that gets to the place of despair, right? The the discouragement that gets to the place of like condemnation, self condemnation. Wait, isn't that what you were preaching in the last video that people should be feeling, must be feeling? All right, but that was atheist though. Now you're probably talking to people who are already in the religion and you want that despair to stop now, at least as long as they're doing the religion the right way. And wow, I want to kind of hover over this for one moment. Look, Mike, I don't know how you define a moment, but I would say you've already been going for several moments at this point. I've always said that when it comes to uh, the Christian, the Catholic who, who, who knows who Jesus is, if you know that, that God exists and you know that Jesus is God, you know that he's established the church. Mm. And if you're not one of those and you read the history of Christianity, you quickly realize that many people established the church and Jesus was not one of them. If you read the thousand pages of Dear Mid McCulloch's A History of Christianity, the first 3,000 years, which oftentimes has not much more than half a page to devote to important figures and events because it's such a long and complex history, it starts to get really fatiguing after a while because it's a constant repetition of the same basic thing. Some guy comes up with an idea and insists that it has to be true, and then they have a bunch of arguments about it, maybe they fight about it, and then people split off from each other into their own little belief groups, and maybe politics establishes one thing as more dominant, at least in some part of the world. Rinse and repeat for thousands of years. If I needed to be convinced further that if there is a true religion somewhere out there, Christianity ain't it, reading the history would do the job. And in the church, he continues to reach out to us. He continues to heal us and, and, and feed us, right? He brings us to Holy Communion himself. He brings us to reconciliation through the sacrament of of confession. Yeah, but he doesn't do any of that. You guys do that. But I guess the fact that that's my position on the matter kind of goes without saying. So there's not much point in me saying it, is there? If you know that, if, if we're convinced of that, the only way Satan, the only way the evil one can win is if he gets us to the place where we're so discouraged that we no longer try. We're no, we're no longer willing to, to keep moving forward. Meaning what? That you stop going to church? That you stop eating the Jesus cracker? That you stop telling your naughty little secrets to your priest? Or something else? I don't really know yet. And what's remarkable about this, I think, is that, that even though we know this, even though we know that the only way Satan can win is if he gets us so discouraged, we're not willing to ask for help. So discouraged you're not willing to ask for help. That's an interesting statement because if I'm not feeling discouraged, I'm not going to ask for help, am I? I'm going to be encouraged. I'm going to be like, okay, I got this. I don't need anybody's help. This is going well. I'm good. Like when I'm trying to build something around the house and I'm balancing three pieces of wood on my back and trying to do something that requires eight hands. And I'm like, nah, this is fine. I can do this. And then it all falls apart and I go, oh, damn it. I don't got it. This sucks. He said, I suck at this. I can't get this done myself. Can you come hold this for me, please? You know, in my experience, you ask for help because you're discouraged. What's the point in asking for help with a thing you feel like you can do anyway? But, you know, I find it interesting that you have this supposedly all-powerful Jesus who's constantly healing you and constantly feeding you spiritually, I guess. And yet this infinitely less powerful being, Satan, is able to mess you up anyway. Like, sure, I mean, maybe that's how it works, but doesn't it strike you as at least a little bit odd? Seems to me at the very least that should get your noggin jogging a little bit. Is... We all have the same source. When it comes to any person who experiences discouragement or despair, I think almost always it comes from the same place. And that place is self-reliance. Oh, you mean like I wouldn't have ended up discouraged if I hadn't tried to build the thing on my own that I obviously couldn't? Yeah, I'll give you that, but I don't think the problem there is self-reliance. I think self-reliance, generally speaking, is very, very useful. Generally, I think having the capacity for self-reliance makes you much less prone to things like discouragement and despair. No, I think the real word for the problem in a situation like that is hubris. Overconfidence. Going way beyond what you're realistically capable of. I think that can lead to discouragement and despair. And and then that's when you give up and ask for help. 
However, I don't think that type of situation is typically where discouragement or despair come from. I think typically these come from situations outside your control altogether. Situations where no matter how much you do or don't rely on yourself, nothing changes. Because the situation is not based on how much you rely on yourself. You can't fix it through those means. You can't fix it by asking for help either. Hell, maybe you did ask for help and nothing changed. I'm sure pretty much everyone can think of a situation they've been in where this has been the case. Where the reason that the situation situation is so disheartening, so discouraging, even leading to outright despair, is because it's outside of anyone's control. You try to fix it yourself, nothing changes. You go to your family and friends to see if they have some way to help, they have no way to help. You go to Father Mike for help and he gives you some platitudes and sends you on your way. You pray to Jesus for help and as usual nothing happens. That's where real discouragement sets in. That deep kind of discouragement that leads to a lifestyle of just giving up. You're like, okay, great. Another thing I'm doing wrong. I, I don't mean it like that. But yes, I kind of mean it like that. In the sense, not to be just more discouraged or be more despairing, that sense of, I think the source is, I can do it on my own. No, I think if you have the sense that you can do something on your own, that's far away from discouragement or despair. That shows that you're in a very healthy place mentally. It's all right, I can handle this. Your basement floods on Christmas Day and you go, eh, well, better get on it. And you grab a shovel and you spend Christmas digging a trench to redirect the water away from your house and say, ah, oh, what the hell, we'll do Christmas next week. True family story, by the way. Or you move into a house and you realize, oh, all right, if I don't want to break the bank here, I'm going to have to get up to speed in carpentry, drywall, electrical, HVAC, plumbing. All right, I got a search engine, let's go. Or your freaking country gets invaded and you're running through the woods and you get shot in the leg, but fortunately you know some basic field medicine and so you clean and stitch up and bandage your own wound. This is stuff that prevents getting discouraged. In life, first and foremost, you need to be able to rely on yourself. You need to be able to trust yourself to be able to handle what gets thrown at you. And if you can't, or if you don't believe that you can, you're just going to collapse. And I don't care how much you pray to Jesus, that ain't fixing the hole in your leg or the hole in your house. I have never felt in my life more discouraged or more despairing than the time that I was convinced that I could not do it on my own, that I could not help myself. And it was only after I became convinced that I could that everything turned around. Once you have that experience of self-reliance enough times, it gets to this point where if some new situation pops up, you don't have this feeling of, what am I going to do? I'm helpless. You have this feeling of, I don't know what I'm doing here right now, but I know I'll figure it out and I'll be fine. In my opinion, discouragement and despair are almost synonymous with a feeling of helplessness and weakness. They go hand in hand. I think, I think the source is, I shouldn't need God's grace as much as I actually need God's grace. Let's pause for a second. Sure, gladly. So what you just said is not the same as self-reliance. What you're talking about is some sort of shame about feeling that you need to lean on this God's grace thing as a comfort mechanism. This is a completely different topic from the question of whether being or feeling self-reliant leads to discouragement and despair. And you may say, ah, oh, but no, the problem here is that this person feels like they should be more self-reliant than they're capable of being. Okay, but that's not what you just said before. You said the problem is self-reliance, is feeling like you can do it on your own. Not feeling like you're inadequately self-reliant compared to what you're supposed to be. Just to refresh, I'll play that back. And that place is self-reliance. I think the source is, I can do it on my own. So if what you actually mean is that a feeling of personal inadequacy for not being sufficiently self-reliant is what leads to discouragement and despair, then say that. Why did you lead with being self-reliant and feeling like you can do things on your own leads to discouragement and despair? These are almost opposite things. The one is possessing a certain type of personal strength and using it, and the other is lamenting the fact that you don't have it. I don't know, maybe you think there's a problem with both, but unless you say that, the way you're presenting it here makes the video feel disjointed and unfocused. Could that be part of our spiritual problem? I don't know. I don't even know what the that is that you're talking about. Once you finally settle on a that, maybe I'll have an opinion. Is I have this, this weird backwards notion that one day I'll get to the place where I'm so holy that I won't need God's help anymore. Okay, so we're going with the personal inadequacy over not being sufficiently self-reliant then? That's the one we're settling on. Are we going to stick with this or are we going to switch again? All right, I'll humor you. So why would the level of holiness be what defines your level of self-reliance? I don't see how that's even related. What is holiness? It's just some kind of investment into the religion or something? Being more obsessed with Jesus and everything than the next guy? Great, so how is that helping you to solve your personal problems? And I don't mean ignore them by focusing on the religion, I mean solve them. 
As an, I think, very self-reliant person who was never religious, I don't understand why anyone would think that your level of holiness increases your level of self-reliance. Is this something people think? Personally, if there's any link at all, I would think it's kind of the opposite. As you get more invested into the religion and more desperately needy for it, you get less able to just rely on yourself to get through the day. Hence this weird thing you were bringing up before of like, I need God's grace just to get myself through the day, man. How much holier can you get than straight up addicted to your religion? Pause on that for a second. I did. I'm not doing it again. Is that something that seems to you like one of the goals? That like, Yeah, one of the goals is is to, to not limp anymore. The one of the goals is to be able to run on my own. One of the goals is to be able to be invulnerable or to be invincible or to be so strong that I don't need God's grace. I mean, if you have a limp and you're not capable of running on your own, yeah, I feel like maybe some physiotherapy or something might be in order. It might be good to set yourself that kind of a goal. What does it have to do with God? Is this some kind of a metaphor? I don't like metaphors. Metaphors are dumb. If you're just talking about like coping with life or something, say that. Anyway, about whether I think this is one of the goals, of course I don't, because I think the entire idea is flawed. The idea is based on this thought that you need God's support to not limp mentally, emotionally, whatever, and to eventually make yourself so strong that you don't need God's support anymore. But of course, this is a belief that only exists within the religion. Outsiders don't have this problem, we just do things. Just like for the religious, sometimes things are a bit easier, sometimes they're a bit harder, sometimes things are encouraging, sometimes they're a bit discouraging. You just deal with things as they come and then move on. Am I being too self-reliant? Am I not self-reliant enough? Am I leaning on God enough? Am I not leaning on God enough? Who cares? Deal with the thing. You're a neurotic mess. Because if that's the case, then maybe my problem is self-reliance. Oh, so now we're switching back again. Now again, we're not talking about feeling like you should be more self-reliant. Now we're talking about being self-reliant again. Do you think these are the same thing? These are not the same thing. I will say, though, that having the thought that, you know, maybe things would go better if I actually did something useful instead of using this religion as a crutch, could easily have some good outcomes. I don't think this is the problem you're making it out to be. You know, self-reliance, as I said, self-reliance always leads to self-condemnation. No. What? How? Oh no, I fixed all my problems myself. I'm a piece of shit. Because I'm not enough. I can't do it on my own. And if I keep trying to do it on my own, I'm always going to fail. Right, and here we get to the core of the preaching. So when he was preaching to atheists, he was saying, you can't think anything matters, everything has to be terrible, you need the religion to make it better. Transparent manipulation of the outsider. And now we see the transparent manipulation of the insider. Listen, you might think you have personal strength. You might think that you can accomplish something. You might think that you can deal with problems. But no, you can't. You're weak. You're pathetic. You can't do shit. If you stop following this religion I'm preaching to you, you're done for. You'll just collapse into a sobbing heap and never accomplish anything. Never deal with any problem that ever comes your way. You need us. We are your strength. Without us, you're nothing. Oh, you say you see atheists out there doing this every day and seeming to be just fine without God? Sure. You're not like them. You're not enough. You can't do it on your own. And if you try it, you're always gonna fail. So basically, the exact playbook of an abusive spouse. And that's pretty much what we're going to be listening to for the entire rest of the video. And if I'm relying on myself, I have no one to condemn but myself. Oh, okay. So if you rely on yourself, you have to condemn yourself. Ugh. Better to rely on God and condemn God instead, eh? Well, no, I doubt you'd say that. In which case, the question is, if you don't condemn God, if you rely on God, why would you condemn yourself if you rely on yourself? Why are you defining your attitude towards life based on who's supposed to get the condemnation for things that go wrong? How is that a helpful way to look at things? But God doesn't want you to either rely on yourself, he doesn't want you to do it on your own, and he definitely does not want you to condemn yourself. Right, he wants you to do as Father Mike tells you. I know, I get it. So what do we do? Oh, thank you. Please, Father Mike, tell me what to do. Well, <laughs> One is rely on God. Yeah, listen, stop trying to look for solutions to your own problems. Just do more religion stuff. Sure, your life might collapse around you thanks to your neglect of your duties, but you might be into the religion enough that you don't feel that bad about it. I mean, this is this is the great mystery of St. Paul, right? St. Paul talks about how he said he was given a thorn in the flesh. Like three, an angel of Satan, three times he, he begged the Lord to take this thorn in my flesh away. He begged the Lord, like, God, I... I need your grace. I don't, I, mean, I imagine I put in my own words or put in our own words right now. We could say, like, he'd say, God, just take this away because I, I don't want this pain here. I don't want this wound here. I don't want this frustration here. I don't want this, this weakness here. Yeah, and then what happened? Nothing got fixed because he wasted his time praying instead of improving himself. But then the Lord spoke to him 
And he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. Because of that, Paul went on to say, therefore I boast willingly, boast of my weaknesses, and I rejoice in that, I rejoice in that lack. Right, so the message is don't improve yourself, don't learn to actually cope with the difficulties of life, don't learn to improve your character, don't learn to improve your circumstances, don't learn to be self-sufficient, self-reliant, don't think about your own capabilities, don't think about improving your own capabilities, don't think about developing capabilities you don't yet have, be proud of being weak and useless and stupid, because as Father Mike said, that'll keep you focused on the religion and feeling like you desperately need the religion to even function as a human being. Christianity is such a degenerate religion. How could you not be embarrassed to say things like this? Look, it's one thing to admit your weaknesses. It can be difficult to work on them until you admit them, at least to yourself. But you're encouraging people to wallow in them like a pig in a fucking mud hole. If we can begin to see ourselves as desperate, if we can begin to see ourselves as absolutely needing God's help at every single moment, that's the first step in avoiding self-reliance. How am I even supposed to respond to this? It's barely even worth dignifying with an answer, to be honest with you. Obviously, none of this is a question of fact. This is a question of perspective. Not the God part, obviously. I mean the part about self-reliance is bad. It's better to feel like you're helpless and desperate. If that's how you feel, fine. Can't really say your preference as to how to approach life is factually incorrect. I'm not sure that this is actually Father Mike's real opinion. I think he finds it useful to say. If people actually start believing this, it might get some asses back in the seats as people increasingly feel desperate for the religion. But whether he himself actually believes it, who can say? All I really have to say about it is that it seems to lead directly to the degradation of society and the individuals within it. This is the type of preaching that leads straight to civilizational collapse. This is how you create a society of pathetic worms writhing around on the ground hoping somebody will come and pick them up. I detest everything about this message. And after the last video and this one, I have nothing but contempt for you, Mike. This is absolutely shameful. What a total disgrace. But no, God, yeah, that's how weak I am. That's how wounded I am. That's how much I need your grace because I can't make it even one moment without you. I cannot imagine living like this. The level of spinelessness being encouraged here, the groveling to the religion. It's nauseating just to listen to. This is a man who is willing to tear everything down. Everything about his society can go in the garbage, as long as he wins a couple converts along the way. St. Philip Neri, apparently one of his prayers every morning was he knew how his lack, he, he knew he needed God's help every moment of the day, where he would, he would pray, he would say, God, look out for Philip today, because if you give him the chance, he will betray you. Ridiculous. Because he knew himself. He knew that like, no, I need your help, Lord, even to just remain faithful to you, even just to not betray you, I need your help. Okay, do you recognize that that's incredibly bizarre behavior? Supposedly being super invested in serving this God guy and yet at every turn wanting to find some excuse to betray him, whatever that's supposed to mean. And so begging the God to like restrain you from doing it. It's so strangely inconsistent. There's something wrong there. Why are you holding this bizarre person up as a role model? And you have that kind of self-knowledge leads us definitely away from self-reliance and leads us into reliance on God. So what is this self-knowledge of anyway? This guy that you were talking about, what does he actually mean when he says he's going to betray God? Does he mean he's going to unthinkingly break some petty Catholic rule? Probably, which I think is kind of one of the big points of a lot of the rules. Oh no, I did it again. There's another rule I broke today. I didn't even mean to. What have I done? Again, just training people into neurosis and self-loathing to keep them in the religion. And yeah, you're right. If people think that way about themselves, they probably will stop wanting to be self-reliant and rely on you to guide their lives, Father. I don't disagree. I just think it's sick to emotionally manipulate people like that. So be patient with yourself. And at the same time, we're still striving, right? We're still striving for greatness. We're still, we're, we're still striving for holiness. Oh yeah, it seems like you're encouraging people to strive for holiness. This groveling desperation you're talking about. Greatness though, really? Come on. You're going to say that now like that's the thing you're interested in? But we realize that greatness, that holiness doesn't come from us. It comes from the Lord. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Humans are helpless, worthless scum and must always be thought of as such. Any accomplishments they ever have, anything they do that's worthwhile. Now that wasn't them. Give credit to God. Humans only get credit for the bad stuff. What a confidence builder, eh? Might as well just lie down and die. And apparently somehow this message is supposed to cure discouragement and despair. I sure am glad that there are a lot of people out there who don't agree with this message, because I'm pretty sure they're the only ones keeping society afloat. So be patient with yourself. I always say, be patient with yourself and ruthless with your environment. If I have things that make me stumble in my life, get rid of those things. The thing that makes me stumble most often is my cat. I'm not going to get rid of him, but thanks for the advice. But be patient with you. Don't get rid of you. 
Unless you find yourself being a strong, capable, self-reliant person, then you gotta get rid of you. Tear that you apart until it becomes a desperate, weak, incapable wreck and keep that you instead. Be able to say, okay, got it. These are my weaknesses. These are my wounds. This is what I'm struggling with. And I'm just gonna dwell on them without doing anything about any of them. Be patient. Be patient with yourself. Ruthless with your environment. And the last thing here is, and let even the falls bring you closer to the Lord. My friend Nick, he always says it. He always says, if you fall, fall into the confessional. Oh, I know. That's what I was saying before about people going to you for guidance on their lives. Every time a Catholic priest says, look for help from God, they mean themselves, which is why I describe this preaching as self-serving. <laughs> like if, if you're, if you're going to stumble and fall if you're running, if you, as you're running after the Lord. Wait, he's running away? What's he running away from? I thought this guy wanted a relationship. Where's he going? If you're stumbling and falling, Fall into confession. Fall into God's mercy. Fall into his grace. Fall into his arms of healing. You see what I mean? God's not in the confession booth. You are. Fall into confession. Fall into my mercy. Fall into my grace. Fall into my arms of healing. No. You're a psychological abuser. Why should anyone want anything to do with you? And yet somehow apparently people do. Th basically this. Never waste your weakness. Never waste your wounds. Every one of our wounds, every one of our falls can be used to draw us closer and closer to the Lord Jesus. Oh, they can be used, all right. I've been pointing out this whole time how they're being used. And I've been pointing out how these wounds and this weakness are being intentionally inflicted in order to be used. The specific kinds of wounds and weakness that you talk about don't exist outside the religion. I feel so weak, I feel so wounded by not being able to please God enough. That's a wound that people who aren't in this type of belief system simply do not have. For us, there's nothing to be fixed. This is a religious idea. It's a wound inflicted by the religion, by people like Mike Schmitz, on purpose, for one purpose only, which is to make the people in the religion feel inadequate enough that they have to keep going further and further and further in, reaching out to Father Mike Schmitz for some way to fix their desperate self-hatred. But there's no fix on offer. It only ever gets worse. The message is, you're supposed to feel bad. You're supposed to feel weak and wounded and helpless. And you're supposed to despise yourself. And then you're supposed to come to me so I can tell you you should feel worse. So that I can tighten the religion's emotional grip on you. I said it was transparent and I meant it. In a lot of cases, these kind of things have to be inferred from context. But that is not the case here. Mike is telling us exactly what he wants. What he's doing. Why he's doing doing it, and yet people listen to this revolting garbage and don't see through it. This video has 5.8 thousand thumbs up, 20 thumbs down, and the comments are overwhelmingly positive, although who can really say if the comments being shown are representative of all the comments that were actually submitted. Either way, the fact that a lot of people can listen to this and be so beaten down as people that they can't even hear it for what it is, is incredibly troubling. So be patient with yourself, ruthless with your environment, and to never waste your weakness. Yeah, never waste their weakness, more like. Never let a good weakness go to waste, eh, Mike? But to actually say, God, this once again proves to me how much I need you. Oh yeah, the fact that this religious leader has manipulated you over the course of years to feel terrible about yourself and helpless proves that really you just don't have enough of his religion. Because that's the problem here somehow. How are people this mentally feeble? I'm not discouraged because of that. I'm encouraged because that's just how much I need you this is how much you love me. Right, and now we go right back to what I said very close to the start. You want to make sure that people inside the religion have their discouragement and despair reduced as long as they're doing the religion properly. Yes, I'm weak. Yes, I'm useless. No, I can't accomplish anything on my own. And yes, if I try to think of myself in positive terms, it'll be a catastrophe because I won't be following Father Mike properly. But luckily I have Father Mike and Father Mike's God there to pick up the slack and help me to do the things that I'm too weak and stupid to do by myself. And that makes me feel okay. I, I feel encouraged by that. Oh, I can't imagine what it must be like for those people who don't have Father Mike's religion. They must feel so much discouragement and despair without God having their backs. I sure am glad Father Mike gave me the solution to this very real and not at all manufactured problem. I think it was St. Teresa of Avila or St. Catherine of Santa, one of those great saints who once said, God does not love you in spite of your sins. He loves you because of them. The more wounded we are, the more love he has for us. So you're using love as a carrot on a stick, huh? The worse of a pitiful worm you can convince yourself you are, the more you will be loved. I have like 20 seconds of this video left and I'm finding it hard to motivate myself to get through it. It's that bad. Because we need it more. So he has it. 
He wants you to have it. Yeah, but conditionally, on you participating in your own brainwashing. You never have to condemn yourself. Oh, please. This entire video, you've been convincing people to condemn themselves. To convince themselves their personality is a disaster in every conceivable way. And then come begging to you for a fix. No, don't run yourself down. Don't condemn yourself. Yeah, give me a break. You also don't have to rely upon yourself. Just get to the end so you can shut up. But realize, be patient with yourself. Ruthless with your environment. You've repeated that multiple times. It's meaningless gibberish in the context of the video. It's a platitude you're compulsively repeating for some reason, but it doesn't seem to have any place here. Cut it out. And never waste your weakness. See, that one does have relevance to the video. You should have just stuck with repeating that one. Okay, well, I hated that video. That was awful. The worst in a long time, and I have to say I am very, very glad that I was spared this kind of religious manipulation as a child. I can't even begin to imagine what it must be like to be attacked and degraded like this constantly. Especially when you're just a child who doesn't even understand what it means for this to happen to them, and who has no means of defense. The fact that someone can sink so low as to use these kinds of methods on other people is difficult to deal with at times. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you would, before you go, please do give the video a like and click subscribe if you haven't. If you like the channel, maybe consider supporting. A couple bucks per video or per month is enormously helpful and huge thanks to all of my supporters who've already made that choice. Early access email list, list.logic.com, and I'll see you next time.